Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm back with another video. Today is going to be a sewing video. I haven't done this in I think over a year. The last video that I did, the last sewing video that I did was the milkmaid dress, I think, and that was in December 2022. So I'm back and this year I plan on making more sewing videos. Before that, I want to show you my new sewing machine so this is my new baby it's my new industrial machine well it's new to me i bought it off of facebook market um and the lid was really really nice such a good condition this is my ks 8700 really really good machine i love it love it a bit it's so fast so good the stitch quality is unbelievable I love it and the reason why I had to get an industrial machine is because 2023 for me sewing was a lot. I am grateful, thank you to all my clients, um, but 2023 sewing was huge for me. I did a lot of sewing for clients, for myself, family, like to a point where I had to open a little e-commerce, small business e-commerce um which i will link down in the description box below where i make like my own designs that you can buy from there and um, also i do custom work as well so yeah this is my machine i still have my little brother somewhere there and i do use it for like button holes because this is a straight stitch machine it doesn't do button holes it doesn't do like zigzag and stuff and talking about the zigzag i also had to get a, an overlogger because I do like the way it finishes. So this is the overlocker that I use. It is the MPSOL 760C. Yeah, really, really good. I just got it serviced. But anyways, on today's video, I am going to be making a pant and a vest, like a waist coat vest. I think this is gonna be like a two part situation, like a two part video. So I'm gonna start with the pants today and then tomorrow I will do the vest. Hopefully I can finish each piece in a day. But um, yeah, so that's what I am doing today. And here's the fabric that I'm going to be using. I'm using a suiting fabric, which looks like this. I've got this from Dubai Center, but also Shondo has it. It's in this bent orange color. I just saw the color and I fell in love. So this is the fabric that I'm going to be using. And I got two meters. It was literally the last piece on the roll. But I know Shondo also has the same, the same color and everything. So if I do need more, I can always pop into Shondo and get more. But hopefully this will be enough because for me, I'm short. And I do want the pants to be a little bit wide, but not too, but still be fitted like on the waist and the arm. I do have my pattern ready. I did draft it myself. And the first I will draft it tonight, but the pants is ready. That's why I'm going to just go ahead and start with the pants. So without any further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and start cutting. So I am starting with the back and I am doing the darts first. I've already um trace them onto the fabric and i'm just gonna go ahead and stitch both of them and i like to go ahead and iron them flat once i'm done stitching so that they can stay clean and smooth and next i am moving to the front i am putting together the pockets so first i'm just putting the uh, pocket onto the front pant leg and i'm pinning them together so i'm gonna stitch on the pocket opening and also under stitch them on both of them and then after that i went ahead and ironed them as well i like to press literally every seam so that everything can stay clean and And I got this machine like three weeks ago and I'm still trying to get used to the speed, especially like the back stitching. Sometimes it just goes faster than I expected, but I am, I'm loving it.
now I'm ironing my pockets, making sure everything lay flat. And now I am pinning together the pocket and the pocket bag so that I can finish the pockets before moving into the next part. So after stitching on the pockets, I went ahead and overlocked them so that it doesn't fray. Like, suiting fabric frays a lot and is really nice to finish with an overlocker. It's not as bulky. I also like to press my overlocker stitch after I'm done so that everything can stay flat. Because it's not really like a thick fabric, it's very thick thin is like a medium weight fabric so you don't want the pockets to be showing on the outside and i also went ahead and overlocked all the edges like all the side seams and the inseams and i did this for both four pieces including the back and i've pinned the back seam together and i'm just gonna go ahead and close it before I can attach the front to the back pieces. And now I am interfacing the fly pieces. And after interfacing them, I did overlock them. And I'm stitching the fly facing onto the left side of the pant. And um, after I was done with that, I also understitched it because we don't want to flip around. and then went ahead and put on my zipper. I lost a clip of me attaching the fly shield um, onto the right pant, but I did that. Um, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch together the both pieces onto the zipper. So my zipper fly is done. Like a zipper fly is something that is not as hard, but you kind of have to find your own way to attach it. And once I was done with attaching all the pieces in the zipper, I went ahead and closed the uh, crotch seam. So once I was done with the crotch seam, I went ahead and traced the uh, fly facing onto the onto the pant on on the outside of the pant on the right side of the pant and and top stitch on it. it i find it easy for me to actually trace it but also remember to remove the seam allowance because it's going to be so big so i went ahead and traced that and top stitch it and now i am closing all the side seams and after i was done stitching i went ahead and pressed all the side seams flat
and I'm closing together the inseam from the one leg to the other just do one straight stitch and if you want to reinforce you can double that but I find that mine works fine if I just do like one stitch it stays strong and it lasts forever And here I have my waistband, there's two pieces, one of them is interfaced and I like to create my uh, waistband to have a little bit of curve. I just find that it sits really really nice and comfortable, it doesn't really leave the gap at the back. And I also created some belt loops, I just made like one long uh, piece of fabric <laughs> that I folded into four just like a bias tape but it's not cut and bias. Um, and now I'm just going to go ahead and stitch the top part of the waistband. I also did under stitch it so that it can stay in place as well. And I'm stitching the belt loop together. I did two stitches on both ends. And after that, I did cut them into five pieces. And they are eight centimeters each. And I went ahead and pinned them first on the pen before pinning the waistband. And just stitch everything together. And I'm stitching the waistband onto the pant and while I'm stitching it I'm also making sure that my belt loops are not twisted they are staying flat the way that I place them as well as my side seam and the back seam you don't want anything twisted there they should just stay flat that's why pressing is very important especially on the side seams and the back seam so i'm just i just keep checking that to make sure that everything is still in place and not twisted or like bunching up And I also closed up both ends of the waistband and turned it the right way. And to secure the inner part of the waistband, I decided to hand stitch it. I was going to do like stitch at the ditch, but I just didn't like how it looked on the inside. The outside was fine, but the inside didn't really look that clean. So I decided to just go ahead and hand stitch everything, which turned out great. And now I'm just stitching uh, the tops of the belt loops. And I didn't make a mistake with the back belt loops. Um, it wasn't really that big of a deal, but I just didn't like how they looked. I had one in the middle uh, lining up with the back seam and two of them, I placed them on the darts. But they were so close to each other that I had to remove the two that were on the darts and move them a little bit to, towards the uh, side seam, which turned out great. The distance was actually like equal, like amazing. And now I'm using my domestic machine to create a button hole for my button. I did hand stitch a button. Mm -hmm. 
the last thing left was to finish the hem first i had to overlook the hem and then after that i did like a double fold of half an inch each time and i pressed everything and then just went ahead and stitched it with my narrow foot so that i can just stay in line and make sure that everything is the same both sides is equal and yeah that was the end of my paint and this is the final results i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you haven't already i have lots and lots of sewing videos to come and i will see you guys on the next one bye